Hello and welcome to another R Gallery tutorial. Today I will show how to create a radar chart in R. Sometimes these are also referred to as spider or web charts. Radar charts can be used to compare two or more individuals on various continuous variables like test scores or sport performance. And these charts can look a bit more interesting than bar charts. But at the end of the video I will go into some of the caveats that you should be aware of when using spider charts. For example, as you can see here, on the use for baseball cards, it's not really clear what, what the scales for the different characteristics really refer to, but they definitely look cool and give some impression on how good players are compared to others. As always, the example will come from the R-Graph gallery, and we will start with some very basic plotting, and then go into different ways to customize the plot, and then show how you can include multiple individuals, and also how to customize the look of the plot for those. Let's get started with the R-Code. The radar chart function is part of the FMSB package, so you have to install it first and then load it with the library function. The FMSB package was created in 2019 along with a book called Functions for Medical Statistics book with some demographic data. And here Minato Nakazawa included the radar chart function with explanations on how to use it and what the arguments mean. Now imagine you create a vector for a student called Jane with five different scores on a 0 to 100 scale and different scores for math, English, biology, music and R coding. And if you create it this way, then the difference is that the vector is named. If you would just include the numbers, then this is how it would look, just a numerical vector with five numbers. But with this command, you actually get an additional attribute to this vector. It's now a named numerical vector with the attribute names, mass, English, biology, and so on. Using names on this vector will give the same result. If we use the radar chart function on this vector, we get an error because the data must be given as a data frame. And if we would turn it into a data frame, the problem is it creates a data frame with five rows and one column. And we need to have the subject as column names and only one row for the individual. So we can use the T for transform function. Now we have the five different columns that will be the edges of the radar chart. And with last value, you can access what you just produced. So now we see instead of before having five observations for one variable, we now have one observation for Jane and five variables, column names. If you now run the radar chart function on this, you get the web, but not the values because something else is missing. The radar chart function expects you to start the first row with the maximum values and the second row with the minimum values of your web. We could simulate that with repeating 100 five times and 0 five times and then bind the vector Jane to this matrix. And if you now run the radar chart function, you get what you were expecting to get the values for Jane in this matrix from 0 to 100. You would actually also get this same result without the repeat function by simply specifying 100 and 0 because R is doing something that's called vector recycling. For example, if you do a row bind of the sequence 1 to 10 with a sequence 1 to 2, it will repeat the shorter vector as often as necessary to fill in the first sequence. And if the two vectors don't match, you get a warning, but it still does the command. So now 1 to 3 is repeated until it reaches the end of the 1 to 10 sequence with the first value that would come now. For the customizations, I want to start with the example that's actually from the art gallery, where 10 values are produced by sampling from the sequence 10 to 20, and then a matrix is generated that has exactly 10 columns, and the column names of data, which is stored as a data frame, are assigned with this vector. So you get a data frame like this. Then again, row bind is used with the maximum 20 repeated 10 times and the minimum 0. As I said, you would get the same result with simply saying, I want to have 20 and 0 as often as the data frame is wide and then we get the following result. There are different ways to find out which arguments are included in a function. You could use the tab key to see what different arguments you're supposed to use for the function modifications. You can also use the question mark on the function to get some help. And now I want to show another way to try out different values of the function argument. And we start with the axis type. So it says the axis type is a value specified by 0 to 5. And 0 means there are no axis labels. So now we can use a for loop 
where i has the value 0 to 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the axis type will then have different values of i, and I put the result in the title with the paste 0 function, and now we see the different axis type values, 0 has no labeling, 1 will get you in percentages from 0 to 100, 2 will just show the maximum values, 3 combined percentages, and so on. The set argument specifies the number of segments for each axis, default is 4, and another way to show that, instead of looping, is to use the par function. This will influence how many plots you can create and with the MF row you say that you want to have a matrix of two rows and three columns and that they are filled row wise. So this produces the following chart where now segment argument varies between one and six. And lastly, I want to show the variations for the line type of the polygon, the values going from 1 to 6, you will have a solid line or a dashed line, etc. And the same can be done for the grid in the background, have different variations of line type. These are the default 6 line types in R, with one being solid and default for the web is 3 dotted. And here I show the different values for the point type of the polygon. 32 means that there is no point and 1 is the circle. So here the polygon in the middle is just a line and then if you use 1 you get a little circle around the actual value. If you ever forget how different point characters look in R, you can simply plot on an x and y value 1 to 25 and then have the point character change from 1 to 25. A bit more advanced way to show that would be with repeating values of x and a different expansion factor for the character. Other customizations for the radar chart would be the color of the lines. So we can address the polygon, line, width and type and color as well as the grid features. So different characteristics of the net also adjust which colors the labels are supposed to have and the width of the net lines. And the expansion factor of the label text. So back to the data you already saw. Axis type 1 meant the numbers here on this axis. The color of the polygon line can be set with the RGB function where you also have an alpha value that goes from 0 to 1. For the filling of the polygon we use the same color but a different alpha value so this is more see-through now and the line width is 4 so making it really wide. For the grid line color we choose gray. Line type 1 is solid. The label of the axis of the grid is set to dark green so you see that it affects these numbers. And the labels to put on the axis are a sequence going from 0 to 20 in steps of 5 and the line width of the web is reduced to 0 0.8. And the same happened for the labels. If we use 1.8 you will see that these get bigger now. So now imagine you have multiple individuals you want to put on the same radar chart. As always there are different ways to produce the data frame for plotting. Here I started with creating a subject vector which then can be assigned to the names of the numerical vector for John. Then you can set a maximum and a minimum and bind everything together along with Jane. It needs to be a data frame and then now that you plot multiple individuals having a legend becomes really important and you can add a legend to any plot with the legend function. Function. You just give it a position, 0.7 on the x-axis, 1.4 on the y-axis, putting it up in the top right corner. The legend text comes from the row names, excluding the first and the second position, so just Jane, John and Ross. The BTY argument says that we don't want to have a box around the legend. The point character 16 is a solid circle. Colors are filled with 1 to 3 values, black, red and green. The same for the polygons. And the text color is dark gray, normal size, but a little bit of expansion for the point character. And now you have an easy way to see where Jane is better than Ross and John, or where Ross is the best. This graph can also be easily improved and customized. Here it's helpful to create color colors for borders where we know we have three individuals and colors for the inside of the polygon which are identical just with different alpha values and then you can use this vector inside the radar chart function where the polygon colors simply get the vector from color borders and the filling of the polygon gets the colors from the inside and then you add a legend again with the colors from the inside and have this nice looking graph. Before I show two more examples of radar charts, I wanted to point out that the datadovis.com page has some more information on various types of charts. 
and they have a caveat section where they point out problems that can occur with different types of visualization. And for the radar charts, a few caveats to be aware of are first, the circular layout makes it harder to read, to which point the value actually extends to. So in a bar chart, you're very used to simply read the category and have the lines go to the axis. And here it's a bit tricky to really figure out what the English score is, where the label is and how far it extends. Also the ordered bar charts they support the ranking immediately you see the top three fourth and fifth place which becomes really difficult on a circular plot and the ordering of these categories can have a huge impact as well because they make the areas look differently depending on how the different categories are ordered for the scales to work you need continuous variables that actually are on the same scale i'll show an example later where i use different scales but then normalize them to this z score overplotting can be an issue as well if you overlap more than three individuals the different colors make it really tricky to identify which value goes where and it can also over evaluate differences so here going from a 7 to a 14 which is a doubling in value makes the area look more than twice as big the website then lists different workarounds where you can still compare individuals with the lollipop chart and you can also have more than two or three individuals and their performance put in a way that makes it possible to still identify who performs performs better in which area. For the next example, I load the datasets library that contains a dataset called US Arrest that's from 1973 and shows different crime rates per 100,000 residents. And as you can see here, the crime rates are quite a bit different with murder being the rarest, 10 per 100,000 in Alaska, assault being more common and rape being in the middle. So putting this into a radar chart with one axis going from zero to 300 wouldn't make much sense because murder and rape rates would become very small. So what I did was to only for the different crime rates produce the Z values, which you can do with the scale function. The scale function centers the data frame but also can scale it if specified true which is the default and then you get the different z scores so one standard deviation above the mean or half a standard deviation one standard deviation below and what i then did was to use a combination of select and contains z to only get the columns with the scaled z scores and use the row means function to produce the average z score of the crime rates so now as i said i arranged by descending average z score so the ones with the highest value on top and then R bind the max and the min from 3 to 0 neglecting all the negative values that we don't have to plot for the top crime states but this looks now like this you have the max and the min and then Florida, Nevada, Alaska, California, Michigan having the biggest average and we have to include 3 as max because some of these Z scores are 2.6 or 2.5 times above the average. What I did next was to make use of the color map package where you can create colors based on a certain package for a given number with a specified alpha. So now you can see for the color borders, I have a completely saturated line for six different colors and the same colors repeat. Maybe you're familiar with the hex code for colors. The last two values are the ones important for the saturation, the alpha, and the first six are identical between the colors and the, the colors for the border and the fill-in. And then I specified two rows and three columns again, have a for loop going through the values three and eight, excluding the min and the max values, and then only picking the ones for normalized murder, assault and rape rates. And in the title, I put the state value from the given row of the for loop. And this gives you a comparison of crime rates from the 1970s for different states. And the last example, I want to show a video that I came across that also shows how to make a radar chart back in 2020. And here, the channel Data Daft picked an example from Marvel Superheroes, where he created different characteristics on a 1 to 7 scale that he picked from the Marvel website. Code is in the description and here you can see that the values are put in manually with the max 7, the min 0 and then four different strength values, speed values, etc. And for the row names he included the different superheroes all manually, then created nice colors for the fill-in and for the line with the scales alpha function. It's again same color, just different situations. And then put in the radar chart with seven segments or seven lines, colors from the created vectors and then a legend in the top right corner. So as you can see, radar charts can be a nice, cool way to visualize comparisons. And I hope this tutorial was helpful for you to create your own charts. 
See you in the next tutorial here at the Data Digest.